Welcome filmmakers, fans, and friends to Indie Cinema Showcase. We're your host, Christina Carmona. And I'm Nanda Luis Roman. Today we're here at the Florida Film Festival at the beautiful Indian Theater in Maitland. After a short hiatus, the Florida Film Festival is back and bigger than ever with its 30th anniversary. We checked out some of the events and talked to a few of the filmmakers. We even got to chat with the legend John Amos. So what are we waiting for? Let's go check it out. It's a, it's a good story, great cast, and under the direction that, that Mr. Bankowski gave us, we were able to tell a story that everybody can relate to, particularly in, in light of the pandemic. It's pretty comparable to a, a storm in that it's affected everyone, from the richest down to the poorest. Everybody's been hit by the pandemic, as everybody here in Florida was hit by the hurricane. Florida is capable of handling any natural crisis. The people came together. As I said, I think it's an example the rest of the country could follow. It was, it was well done. Hey guys, so I'm here with Tim Anderson. Tim, thanks for joining me today. Oh man, I'm so happy to be back. I feel like we, we were just here recently. What's, uh, tell me what's, what's been going on. I mean, I feel like this festival's never ended. I feel like it's like a two and a half year process of programming it. But, you know, we're back. It's April. This is the normal spot. And we're having the 30th annual Florida Film Festival. So. Now, for those of you joining us, uh, you recently had the Florida Film Festival back in August. Is this correct? Yeah, we delayed last year's, obviously, because everybody was locked down during April. Uh, we were able to pull it off the second week of August, 14 days. And uh, we literally turned around, walked out from the final day, and opened the 2021 Florida Film Festival. So you basically have a pillow and a, and a blanket in the back where you sleep all the time? I don't, they don't give me comfortable things. I just have to sleep on the floor. <laughs> so tell me, how was it having to do such a quick turnaround for this one? I mean, it's hard because it does feel like there was absolutely no downtime. And even though there was a window where everybody was home last year kind of doing nothing, and we were running virtual aspects of the Enzian, and we were talking to filmmakers about how to pull off a virtual festival, plus teaching ourselves how to do one. Um, so there was like a split between programming the normal festival and then programming a virtual festival. This one we came in, put the teams back together, went through our 2,000 plus submissions. January started putting it all back down together, kind of knowing we were going to do a very similar festival, single screen NZ in 14 days with a hybrid virtual platform. And at least we knew how to do it. The difference is, though, it felt much more concentrated because we had to do both of those disparate elements at exactly the same time when they were actually split by several months last year. Even though they happened at the same time, we had a much longer build out. And this one, we had our same kind of basically like six week build out from the time we finally picked the last movie till we were announcing the schedule. And in that window, you have to build the infrastructure for the everything. Right, right. You know, I think going into the festival this year, we didn't know what kind of material we were going to get from the filmmakers. Most people were not working last year. We were concerned that there'd be any features that completed post. But we've got a feature film that was shot completely during the pandemic. People in it are wearing masks, um, partially funded with stimulus checks. So the content was there. Artists were cooped up and they needed to get you know, stuff done. A lot of them wrapped up their filming in March and had time in pandemic to edit. Hearing a lot of documentary filmmakers were like, well, we couldn't do anything else but edit our movies. So you got the world might have stopped, but creativity didn't. So, you know, people got around it. Uh, so I know you're a busy guy, so I'm not going to keep you too long. Uh, thanks for joining us today. If people want to find out more information about the Florida Film Festival, where can they go to? Yeah, everything's on FloridaFilmFestival.com, including links to get to the virtual platform, which is on a much longer address that nobody wants to know from me right now. But yeah, everything's FloridaFilmFestival.com, and you can bounce to that from NZN.org, as always, and social medias. Instagram's blowing up with all kinds of stuff that's going on, too. So. All right, well, Tim, thank you for joining us today. If you guys want to check out the Florida Film Festival, please go to the website, come out, and check out some of the films that are playing this year. You have a great time, I promise you that. Hey, guys, let's take a quick break to show trailers of some of the films that were shown here. Did I forget to mention that my grandmother has decided to come along after all?
And so it begins the in-law invasion. It's just a little surprise party for Mom and Patrick, too. Congratulate them on 10 years of wedded bliss. There's more of you coming? Grandpa, please don't tell anyone yet. He's not so open-minded when it comes to the gay. We're cutting into your programming today because we are concerned about getting you the most accurate information on Hurricane Trolley. Our meteorologists believe that it's heading more towards Central Florida, particularly toward the Orlando area. Oh! David, it's too late. No! You shut up! You're only six years old. What do you know now? You watch your tone, boy. What the hell was that? What have we done? They're raising the stage fee. Again. Are you serious? Mm. At least I don't have to pay a fee to clean that bathroom. Yeah, you still have to scrub toilets. Don't your knees get sore? Don't yours? Hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I have strong quads. Oh, oh I do too. <laughs> 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 Damn, girl, you gotta put this on and do that on stage. So, are you texting this early in the morning? Huh? No one. I know that look. <laughs> Should I make her one too? I think she'll be okay. Uh, tell your girlfriend that I said hello. What do you mean, we? This is not your problem. Don't be like that, okay? Like, what? I am trying to figure it out. What do you want to know exactly? You are nothing like him, okay? Nothing. They said they could take care of it, but it would need to be soon. How much? Sure you're trying to get into this, right? You have got to tell me Shut what's up. going on. Shut up! I got so much to say, but words don't fit in the space between your rocks and it's hard to act. You couldn't ruin my life. Beautiful, how you doing? You all right? You a preacher? This your church? I ain't never seen a reverend in this case. Incoming call from Sugar Lips. Incoming so call from send my Sugar Lips. Going off he's Incoming call Hold from on. Sugar Lips. Call declined. This messed up. I apologize. It kept beeping. Danny, girl, you crazy. Still skating. <laughs> what is Oh, man, you know, I can't call it. How you doing? I'm good, you know. It's just me and Wes now. It's too hot for hugging mama. Mm. That's a fair point. I got shorted today, and then that's why you see me going around doing post pals and everything, because I just need to get this apartment. Where are my wontons? I didn't see any wontons on your order. Maybe you dropped them while you were skating. I'm going to be back at 5 o'clock, OK? And then can we sleep inside? <laughs> yes, of course we can sleep inside. She's kidding, because we always sleep inside. <laughs> Mommy, mm -hmm. can we go home now? But you love camping. You used to camp with Daddy all the time. I know, but we didn't camp this long. Danny, you live on the side of the road in the tent? See beauty. She's just a little girl. I don't want her to know this stuff. I can get you the rest soon. I really need this place. I'm sorry, Danny. It's not enough. You ain't got to be out here in those skates. You can come with me. There's a little something for you. Make your next move your best move, baby. Thanks, Daddy. Have I ever told you about angel wishes? You take Daddy's ring and you say, I wish that Wes 
would give me a big smile. <laughs> it works. Danny, wait, are you okay? You guys good? I'll be right there for you. Why did you go there? I told you, it was not safe. Do you know these people? The man, he is her son. He helps. The woman, she practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. I don't know what day it is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. chance you will be found guilty. This ruling will likely carry a sentence of 45 to 47 years in prison. More info about my trial. Your trial will be ready in up to 90 days. What am I accused of? What is the crime of the defendant? The defendant is Mateo Torres. I want to speak to a human being. Please. Human being. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Please try again. Good morning. Morning. Are you meeting someone on the team? Yeah, my daughter. Okay. I saw you here yesterday. And? This is a different set of girls. <laughs> I got a guy lurking around my gym here. Okay, and where is he right now? I can't see him, but his car is in the lot. So you don't know if he's actually in the building? Well, no, but I have a gym full of girls here. It's not safe. Look, just keep an eye out and call us back if you see him. Hey, guys, I'm here with Katie Skip at the Florida Film Festival. Katie? Thank you for joining us today. So, can you tell us a little bit about the film that you have here at the festival? Of course, yes. Uh, Florida Woman is here. It's uh, my directorial debut, actually. Uh, it's a short documentary about a Florida man story, but of a Florida woman named Mary Thorne, uh, who is fighting the state to save her pet alligator. So it kind of gives a little bit of a glimpse uh, into the person behind the headline. Now, how, how did, what made you decide to come up with this, uh, with this type of story? So I had seen a lot of the Florida Man stories and often it felt like they were coming from this place of, you know, a sensationalist media and ridicule. And I really wanted to understand who were these people behind the headlines. <laughs> uh, so I kind of uh, was digging into various stories and I came across Mary's and I just felt like there was a lot more to say, a lot more to tell, and I wanted to know who she was. Um, and when I got there and I met her, I just realized she was this incredibly empathetic woman that really had rescued and gave life to this alligator. Um, that would have otherwise died in the wild. Um, and the media kind of took her story by, by storm and it kind of got out of her control. And she ended up using the media actually in her favor to end up saving the alligator. So really just telling that story. 
That's awesome. And, it, it, you know, it is true. Like today, nowadays, any sort of headlines can be turned into a meme or some sort of, like, comical thing. So it's good that you're actually kind of going behind the scenes of what's happening with the story and bringing to life the true story behind what was actually happening in her life. Uh, so what made you decide to choose the Florida Film Festival to uh, premiere your film? Well, I mean, I couldn't think of a better place, honestly, for it to premiere. Um, you know, Mary and her story just happened, you know, pretty much down the street. And I feel like it's, it's really the setting that, one, I think Floridians just will really love this story. And two, um, I think it can, it, can, it can reach a broader audience, but I mean, this is an amazing theater in place, and so it's been incredible so far. Now, are you a local filmmaker? I'm from Miami, Florida, born and raised Floridian. Um, I'm living in Los Angeles now, but this will always, always be home. It always brings you back, doesn't it? It does, it does. So the if humidity. We, <laughs> right, uh, we can live without that. Yeah. So if we want to find out more information about the film, where can we go? So I have a website, uh, cskip.com. Right now, uh, you know, hopefully through things like this, you can learn more about the film. The film is premiering here as well as uh, screening at the Sarasota Film Festival at the end of the month and then the Maryland Film Festival. And then hopefully it will, uh, you know, have a digital online premiere in the near future, but uh, details to come. Hey guys, I am here with Marcos and Chris from The Old Waits. Guys, thank you so much for taking some time to speak with me today. So, first, I want to know, what is The Old Ways about? Give us a little synopsis. Uh, uh, the Old Ways is about a woman, uh, she's a Mexican-American um, who returns to her ancestral home and uh, in the southern uh, tip of Mexico in an area called Veracruz. And uh, she's captured by a bruja, which is a, like a witch, witch doctor. Um, and uh, they believe that she has a demon inside of her and they're not going to let her leave until they exercise it. Oh, I'm sold. All right, so where did this idea come from? You know, I was trying to figure out a story we could tell that was scary, that had some personal connection and some cultural identity, and uh, really wanted to try to do like an exorcism story, but from a point of view that we haven't seen many times or if ever before from this very Latin American perspective. So I kind of went back to some of the stories that my mother had told me of growing up in Puerto Rico of brujas, of cleansings, of things that just felt a little different and ancient and, and kind of interesting to search at. And once we started wrapping the story around that, we discovered it was a really unique and um, exciting take and we could just be a lot more fresh with it. So we were uh, thrilled, you know, Chris started doing a lot of the research and diving in and we kind of went back and forth on the script to keep adding all that wonderful research in and all this texture in and really trying to make something unique. Not only does the story sound really cool, but it has to have that scenery to match. Yeah. So where did you shoot this? Well, we shot uh, a good bit of it in a sound stage where we, we built a, a nice little environment for our movie. But like you said, we needed to know what was outside that sound stage. So we actually flew to Puerto Rico and flew and, and, and shot inside of the jungles there beautiful beautiful topography we found this amazing cave which is a central uh, location inside of our story called la boca and uh, the cave was in Kamui, and we knew the moment we saw it that that was exactly where our story had to kind of you know be centered around so it was wonderful to shoot there wow you guys have something really great going on so if people aren't here to catch this film it screens tonight correct tonight, yes yeah. friday night where, where else can they see it what how can they find out more of your work or where to find out where it's shooting next yeah or screening next I'm so sorry. if you miss the premiere tonight which i would assume you are missing the premiere tonight since it's uh well after that um it's still available to watch virtually at uh, the florida film festival so please tune in if you're in the state of florida beyond that uh we can't make an announcement just yet but let's just say it won't be that difficult to stream it in the near future um, on a certain service. And if you'd like to find out more details about the movie or where it might be playing in different festivals, you can go to theoldwaysmovie.com and you can follow us on pretty much all social media at The Old Ways Movie. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys and congratulations. Thank you so much. I look forward to watching this film. Great. Hope you do. All right. Thank you. Well, that's it for our time here at the Florida Film Festival. I love this event, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this exclusive content. We always have a great time when we're out here at the Florida Film Festival. If you want to be a part of this event, be sure to come out next year. For more information, check them out at nzion.org. And if you want to be featured on Indie Cinema Showcase, 
email us at icstv at yahoo.com. And as always, follow us on our socials at ICSTV on Facebook and ICSTV Show on Instagram and Twitter. Well, that's all the time we have for you for this episode of Indie Cinema Showcase. But as they say in the movie business, that's a wrap. See you next time. <laughs>